Imagine being in one of these homes and all of a sudden a fleet of Apache helicopters show up right outside your balcony with the sole intention of destroying the entire neighborhood. Where I'm standing right now was once the most dangerous area in one of the most violent cities. So much so that they called it the murder capital of the world. But today, things have changed and we're about to tell you that story. As most of you know, Medellin was the base of operations for Pablo Escobar's drug cartel during the 1980s. Now, within Medellin, one area stood out as not only being the most densely populated area in the city, but also one of the most dangerous neighborhoods in the world, Comuna 13. Along with cartel violence, left-wing guerrilla groups were active in the area, and the conflict eventually came to a boiling point known as Operation Orion. On October 16th, 2002, government Apache helicopters flew over the neighborhood and began to fire at anything that moved. The government stated that only a dozen people were killed, but the actual number is said to be in the hundreds. The attack became known for the widespread human rights violations, and 15 years later, many of the people there still don't have answers. From then on, the state left the commune in total neglect and never recognized the abuses that the inhabitants experienced. But slowly, with the help from local organizations and the municipality, they've been able to renovate the neighborhood into a bustling place of art, life, and peace. Communa 13 is now seen as an example for change. So we thought we'd walk right into the Communa and see the state it's in today. So wherever we go, and Darren is doing the directions, we always get lost. The problem is right now we're going to like the slums of Medellin. Darren keeps switching where we're going, so he's going back and forth thinking he's so confident every time. It's always wrong. I'm genuinely afraid that we're going to end up in a very bad place. Then what do you have to say in your defense? I know where I'm going. Huh? He knows where he's going. Oh, okay. Where are we going, Darren? <laughs> where the f are we? I'm actually thinking maybe this was... Huh? I think we're lost. He don't does make not it look up. very confident. What? <laughs> There to you know that dead in directions. <laughs> <laughs> it will take you the longest way possible to get any from point A to point B. <laughs> a little left, a little right. Kids, if you want to get out of your comfort zone, follow Darren into a slum. Those plastic bottles that are trees growing is the idea that once you know someone dies, instead of taking revenge, you plant a tree. These are all people who have been killed through the fighting. Three different groups were fighting for control of the place, and basically it's just mercenaries and like teenagers killing each other. The idea is not to dwell on the past and enact revenge, but to plant a tree in order to hope for the future. How are you? How are you? Santiago. Carlos. Carlos, me amo Tomás. Gracias. People here are really nice. The dogs are not. Everybody's like very generous. Yeah. Ah, wow. 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 El que rojo, el que le duro. Aquí se cultiva la coca. Y en Estados Unidos la consumen. I was just saying if he's optimistic or pessimistic about the past, and he's saying uh, he's like, if it just all depends on if the education system keeps improving. And I'm saying if two things happen, if the education improves, and people stop consuming cocaine. Correct. Those are all the founders of the barrio, and that's him. Acá soy yo. What? Just saying how 
you know the helicopter raid? Yeah. I was like, how was that for you? Like, whatever. And she was like, yeah. Like, they shot down her kid, her son. The woman you were talking to? Yeah. She was saying also after like 2002, like 90% of the population here was just women and children. Like, all the men were just shot down. <laughs> Hey! Hola, amigos. <laughs> it's the cutest thing ever. Like it really does feel safe. It's just Colombian people are like have, have been nothing but friendly. But, yeah. Except the dogs. <laughs> the dogs in this neighborhood, man. F that. The city figured it out and like they invested in these escalators that might seem stupid, but it brought a lot of people here. So it cost five million dollars to build these which seemed insane to us when we first heard it, but now that we're here, it makes sense. It looks like it brought a lot of tourism. It looks like that benefited them. It doesn't look like it's something that they're ashamed of or, or that they dislike. Cheers. You've got a lot to learn, young oh Padawan. God. And while Darren films the progression, the other boys partake in a street soccer game. Fantastic. Look at these boys. Young and wild and athletic, showcasing their most finest skills. Shut up, Thomas. In the streets. Shut up, Carl. Hola. <laughs> Thomas. <laughs> yeah. bueno, que ¿Cómo estás? Bien. ¿Cómo te llamas? Joan. Tomás, mucho gusto. ¿Cuántos años tienes? Ocho y el diez. Ah, ¿es tu hermano? Ah. Hasta luego. Ay, humilde. Adiós. <laughs> we left Comuna 13 feeling positive about its future. Just 20 years ago, this was the crime and violence city of the world, and now it's filled with community and forgiveness. We saw firsthand that no matter how hopeless some part of the world may seem for recovery, Love and persistence can always turn it into a place of unity and peace.